Good morning, YouTube. What I'm working on today is I'm making some floating shelves that are going to go in my, I don't know, it's kind of like a dining room, informal dining room area, I suppose. What we're going to do is make like a coffee bar area. And I wanted some shelves where my wife could put all her 1600 freaking Starbucks cups. I know she doesn't actually have 1600, but it feels like it. There's an entire cabinet full of them in my house. So yeah, we're going to make some shelves so she can put them out because that's what she wants and I try to keep her happy. So what we're gonna do is this is gonna be pretty straightforward. What I'm gonna do is essentially make the shelves like sort of like a box. It's gonna, I'm gonna put the wood together, stain it and hang it on the wall. So I'm gonna show you how to do all that. I'm gonna go really simple with this. What I've got is some one by eight by eight foot, two pieces of that. I've got one by four by eight foot. I've got one of those. And then what I did was I had some wood from a previous project sitting around. This is just a little one by three by, it was eight feet also, but I've cut it down to seven and a quarter because that's how deep this eight inch board is, seven and a quarter inches. So the plan is I'm gonna kind of put this between the two eight foot long boards, nail everything in place, and then put this on the front as a face. So I'm trying to keep it really straightforward. This is gonna fit on the wall nicely. The wall is about nine and a half feet, so an eight foot board is going to be perfect to go on that wall. It's not going to stick out too far. It's only seven and a quarter inches plus the three quarter inch thickness of the wood. So I'll give it right about eight inches off the wall. So it's not going to be too intrusive when you're trying to walk past or anything. So I'm trying to keep everything simple. Don't want to make too many cuts. The only thing I've had to cut so far are those two boards that are going to go on the ends. And that's it. So from here, I'm just going to start gluing and nailing everything together. It should be pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So follow along. All right, YouTube, so the first step is to measure all of your boards that are going together. Just because they all say eight feet or four inches wide, etc., do not trust that. Uh, for example, the four inch board that I bought to go across the face is actually three and a half inches wide. So take that into account. These eight inches board, eight inch boards here, were all different lengths by just a little bit. But what you don't wanna do is assemble your shelf and find out they're all different lengths. That's not the time to find out. So go ahead and measure all your boards first, then come back, cut everything to the to a common length for the shelf, and then you're gonna start gluing everything up. Now this part's pretty straightforward. You're just gonna grab your glue, put a little glue on the end. I've cut these little sections that are come out to three and a half inches. So this is two inches, three quarter or three quarters, three quarters, and two. So for a total of three and a half inches. I'm gonna put this in place, clamp them on, and then use my use my nail gun here to uh, assemble everything. So here we go. Another thing you wanna do is make sure you're paying attention to the quality of each side of the board. Sometimes one side is better than the other. Like one side will have a bunch of knots or cracks in it, the other side won't. So make sure you pay attention to that. Unless you're looking for a rustic look, then you wanna look for the knots and the cracks and everything. Now you're gonna put a little glue on the top surface here and set your other board on top.
So your next step is to put some glue across your front face and glue your last board in place and nail it all on. So again, being mindful of what your wood is looking like. I've got this big, huge knot right here. I'm gonna put this in the back. So this part it might actually be beneficial to set this on the ground and nail it up, but I think you get the idea. What you want to do is make sure that A, you're wiping off any excess glue that might be hanging around and make sure that the sides of these are lining up as best as possible to this. If it's not perfect, don't worry about it. You can fix it with a little bit of a wood filler and or a plane later. If you've got high spots, you can plane it down. Wood filler, you can fill in any spots that you know, it's not like right here, it's not gonna be perfect. Along the edges, you can put a little wood filler there, come back and sand it and get it looking pretty good. But I'm gonna go ahead and set this on the ground, get it nailed up. Make sure also whenever you're nailing, that you're not nailing near your fingers because the nails have a tendency to come through the side of the board if you don't have the angle just right. And it will go into your finger. Ask me how I know. So once you've nailed that all up, you pretty much have a shelf here. So the next thing you're gonna do, as I said before, come back and use some wood filler. Or if you want a rustic look, you can just leave it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back, use some wood filler, fill in all these little gaps here on the end. Uh, all of my nail holes and stuff, which I got about 6,000 of them. I know, I like to overdo it a little bit. But uh, yeah, just kind of, I'm just gonna come in with a, um, a putty knife and put some wood filler in all these little spots here, anywhere I got any big knots and stuff, big cracks or anything. Because again, this is that common pine board. It's got a lot of that going on. I'll come in and fill all that, do a good sanding, and then start the staining process. I don't think you really need to see the process for that. I mean, if you can manage this, I think you can use some wood filler and some staining. But what I will do is sh next to show you how to hang it on the wall. So stay tuned for that. All right, YouTube, just wanted to show you what I've got real quick after a bit of wood filler and sanding. So I came back, filled all my little nail holes with wood filler. Also, anywhere I thought there were like knots and cracks down the surface. And, oh, one other thing I did. Well, here, let me show you this first. So I did round the edges off a little bit and tried to sand this as flat as I could on the sides. It's not perfect but it will give it a little bit of a rustic look. So one other thing I did, let me see if I can flip this over without knocking one down. I'll just flip it on its side actually. You'll see as I put little spacers in there to kind of hold everything together because I was getting some, one, one set of shells was bowing inward towards the middle and one was bowing outward. So I put those spacers in there put them in place, glued them and nailed them in position just to kind of make sure everything was staying parallel all the way down the board. But now it's time for some stain. So I'm gonna to go, to, go ahead and stain it up, show you what I've got. All right, everybody. So after a little bit of sanding, hand planing, staining, waxing, etc., this is what I've got. I've got something that looks like this. I think it's looking pretty good. And we're ready to mount this thing on the wall. So what I did was I went ahead and cut some two inch wide pieces that are going to fit right inside this little groove here. And then I'll put screws going this way. But I'm not gonna drill the screw holes yet until I get everything mounted on the wall. So what I did was I used a stud finder to find out where the studs were side to side. And then I took a measurement where I wanted my shelf to be and marked that as well. So the next step is 
I'm gonna take those blocks here, these two inch blocks, I went ahead and just doubled them up. This is three quarter inch plywood because I wanted to have plenty of space for the screws to grab onto. And then I'm gonna take some, let's see how long these are. Some three and one eighth inch cabinet screws. And I will go ahead and screw those into the stud where they need to be right here. And then again, I'll mark where my screw holes need to be on this here, drill the holes, put a countersink in, and then drill that in. That should hold it really securely to the wall, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount these, and then I'll show you the process of actually hanging the uh, shelf onto the wall. Okay, so what I've done is, as you can see, I've used my cabinet screw to mount these blocks onto the wall. And then from there, I went ahead and picked my shelf up, test fit it, and then measured how far I needed it to be from my wall to the edge of the shelf. And then I transferred that measurement, or not from the wall, I'm sorry. Yeah, I measured from the wall to the edge of the shelf, so I knew what that distance needed to be. And then I calculated from the edge of the shelf to the block, so I knew where to drill my holes so that I can mount this thing. So I went ahead and marked that off. Then I measured from the center of this block to the center of that block transferred that measurement here, and then I picked it up and held it, held the shelf below the blocks to make sure that the lines ended up with the center mark of the block. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill my holes, countersink them, probably put a little stain there, and then I'm just gonna pick it up, set it on there, and put the screws in. It's pretty simple. So in preparation to hang this thing on the wall, I went ahead and ran to Ace Hardware, grabbed some inch and a half long wood screws. And then I went ahead and pre-drilled the holes here and countersunk them. That way the screw heads will not stick up above the shelf surface so nothing gets caught on the shelf. So from here, this is gonna be pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna lift this thing up, place it on the wall, and then screw the two screws down into the block that I had mounted on the wall. Now I went ahead and put two screws that were the Way there would be one on each side. I wanted to have a little extra. You're probably okay with one screw, but I always like to overdo everything just a little bit, over engineer it. I'd, like, I'd rather spend a couple extra dollars on screws and not have this thing come off the wall with like 800 coffee cups on it than use one screw and have it pull out. That's just me. But let's just get this thing mounted on the wall. All right, YouTube, so after getting everything mounted up, this is what I've got. I think it looks pretty good. What I'm gonna do is take that table right there, convert it. I'm gonna cut it down and make it more narrow and more long, and then put a different top on it, kind of repurpose it, and have this be like a copy bar with the little bar stools. So I think that's gonna look pretty nice, but these are the shelves. You can see they look pretty good hanging on the wall. And you can see the mounting locations are barely visible and nothing's gonna get caught on there like the, the coffee cups that are gonna be sitting here. But I think overall this looks pretty good and I hope this helps you out with your projects. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. Thank you very much.